How you doing everyone? Welcome to 8 Bits in the Basement. One of the first series of videos I made on this channel when I started was to do with this thing that I still haven't put in a case and I really should because after breaking a few times and I had to repair it a few times but what it is is an Atari multi-cart so it can hold up to 32 4 kilobyte ROM images so for 32 4 kilobyte games and I can switch between games using these little um, dip switches and shove it into the Atari and away I go. Now uh, a lot of games are of that size, 4 kilobytes, but if you want to play some of the more complicated games or some of the more familiar games like Centipede or Asteroids or God forbid ET the Extraterrestrial, um, what you need is you need a cartridge that can take the larger ROM files, so the ones of 8 kilobytes, 16 kilobytes, 32 kilobytes. And looking around on the internet, I found a, a do it yourself little cartridge, or a cartridge PCB at least, that you can use to do this. And back in 2004, Pixels Past were selling, were selling these, um, these little kits. But since then, uh, all this stuff is after being released under the Creative Commons uh, version 4 license, which means that the Gerbers to make the PCBs are freely available, along with the BOM and all the bits and pieces you need to, um, to be able to make your own cartridges. And um, this particular one is capable of playing ROMs that are 8 kilobytes, 16 kilobytes, and 32 kilobytes big. So, um, I'll put a link to the site and they've got not only for the Atari but they've also got cartridge PCBs for the Colicchio Vision and for the Atari 400 and 800 for the XE and the XL I think. I don't know I never had any of those systems but they've they've got a few different um, bank switching and regular cartridges PCBs they're not actually cartridges they're the PCBs and you make them up yourself. So basically they supply the Garbers you can download these garbers and get them made up by your favorite PCB manufacturer. It doesn't cost all that much. And uh, when they arrive to you, all they need is, um, well, on, on this particular one, on the Atari ones at least, all they need is a resistor, two um, capacitors. This guy here is what they call a GAL chip. Well, this is a GAL chip. Actually, what it is is a PLD or a programmable logic device. And basically what it is, it's, it's like a little logic chip that you can program. So you can make it whatever you want, a, a bunch of AND gates or NOR gates or whatever way. But the um, Pixels Pass themselves who created this whole design, they um, include files that you can uh, upload or upload. You can flash to these little... Um, these little chips here and uh, it'll it'll what it'll effectively do is it creates the bank switching and bank switching is pretty much as the Atari can only see a four kilobyte block of memory or a four kilobyte bank uh, what happens is with an eight kilobyte game for example that little chip will effectively cut that eight kilobyte game into two slices of four kilobytes each and then as the Atari needs to it'll present whichever four kilobyte block or bank that uh, the, the Atari needs to read next and that's pretty much how they get around that limitation so the eight kilobyte one uh, has a special code to cut the eight kilobyte guy in two and uh, the 16 kilobyte to cut it in four and the 32 kilobyte to cut it in eight so um there's different codes for different chips so when when you're making up your um your cartridge you need to first of all decide what game you want to use and uh, see what size it is and from that you program your gal chip accordingly a little gal chip then is inserted first it goes in like that some way if the pins were weren't bent or anything you go in there anyway some way like that and then he can be soldered in place and then afterwards, what you do is, now I put in backwards because there you go. It should go in on the other side. But anyway, afterwards, what you do is you program your, your chip here, be it an 8 kilobyte, 16 kilobyte, or a 32 kilobyte ROM chip. You would program with the game code and you'd insert that in and, um, 
and solder that in place. And then finally, there is a little 0 0.1 microfarad capacitor, which is used as a decoupling capacitor for this guy, just to smooth out voltages and whatever to, to kind of um, stop any little potential errors. And then there is a 100 picofarad capacitor that's used here. And the idea behind that is when it's used in conjunction with this, which is a resistor, it makes up what's called a RC timer or a resistor capacitor timer. And its function is to provide a little delay of only a couple of hundred uh, nanoseconds between the Atari itself and this little programmable logic device to let it sort out its um, the signals it wants to send back to, to stop any crashes or any hiccups or whatever, that kind of way. Now, I had a little problem with that particular uh, capacitor and I didn't use it at all and the cartridge works perfectly for me. But I'm not sure why that should be. I don't know, is it because it's a PAL Atari and these were, I think, originally designed for NTSC, or is it because I have a CCAM Atari, which are rare enough, and the timings are a little bit different in it? But um, I'll show you. I'll show you what it does to me when I've got that fella in place, and I'll show you equally uh, that it works perfect without it. But there you go. That is that. Now, so here I am. This weird kind of awkward video angle at my computer here and what I have is I'm after setting up my mini pro programmer just plugged it into the USB port on the Pewty and I've started up my mini pro software so this here is the cartridge PCB that I've assembled and I put sockets on it so that I could easily swap around the bank switch and PLD and also the, um, the ROM chip and try out different stuff on the Atari so I said I'd just show you how easy it is to, to program these chips. So we'll start, what we're going to do is we're going to program up Commando for the uh, Atari 2600. So Commando is a 16 kilobyte ROM. That's how large it is. So we need to program up the PLD with the 16 kilobyte bank switching code. So in order to do that, all I do is I insert the PLD into my programmer, by that making sure that I've got pin one in pin one location. And what I want to do then is I want to select the correct type of chip here. So what I've got here is I've got my GAL 20V8D, which is that one there. And now what I want to do is I want to, I want to open the 16 kilobyte bank switch code. So I've got it in here, Atari. Atari cartridge PCB, and here we are for 16K, the F6. So this is it. And now all I need to do is to click on program, and it will erase the gal, and it will program it with the new code and verify it. And there we go, programming successful. So all I need to do now is remove this chip, and I can insert it into my cartridge, just making sure that I put pin one at pin one. There we go. And that guy will push in like that. Now, exactly the same for this guy here. This here is my uh, 16 kilobyte uh, ROM chip, which is after being um, erased completely. So this guy here is a 27C128. So. What I'm going to do, because this programmer actually doesn't support the exact time type of chip that is, so I need to select something close enough to it. So, whoops, I have to fall over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this AMD here, which is pretty much the same chip, but I need to uncheck the check ID so that it'll program it anyway. And now all I want to do is file and open my go looking for it my Atari ROM so we will go commander here. here we are okay here we are commando so we will load that into the buffer I will just check that the EEPROM I have is blank 
the device blank check blank and the device is blank and now what I'll do is I will program it so I just click on program here and program so it'll program it'll verify and uh, everything should be good there we go programming successful so I can remove this chip pop it in making sure again that pin 1 is in the correct location and that's all there's to it that little cartridge PCB should now work for me in my Atari 2600 so we'll go try it out and see what happens eh? so I'm after setting up my Atari here so this is the Seacam version of the Atari as I explained before and that's why I was having a few little problems with the 100 picofarad capacitor on this guy and I'll show you those but we've got our everything programmed up and it's it's time to test it out and see if it works or not so the Atari turned off we slip in the cartridge with the ROM chip facing towards the TV and we power on and there we go so it's after working it's programmed up everything looks to be fine and uh, we can play our game ah. And this is what happens. Now, this is the problem I was having for a long time with this. No matter what I programmed onto the onto the cartridge, I was having resets and I was having all kinds of problems. And as it turns out, for me at least, and I don't know, it may just be on the Seacam version of the Atari, it was the 100 picofarad capacitor there, part of the RC timer. And if I just break it off, You'll see that uh, just with one leg broken so that there's no contact there made anymore. If that, yeah, there we go. Um, it should work perfectly now. So I turn it on and we can start playing. So there you go. There, there will be no more resets now after that. But there you go. That's, that's that. That cartridge works perfectly. You can put using the bank switch code you can put whatever um whatever size of game you want on it anywhere from 8 to 32 kilobytes and play away on your atari so there you go there's a little episode for you on how to do that so i hope you enjoyed this if you did think it click in the subscribe button and um, you can always leave a comment down below and uh, i will talk to you the next time in the next episode which will be coming quite soon and have fun in the meantime bye bye